Hello, and welcome to another Sunday School uh, lesson review broadcast for Sunday, April the 25th, 2021. Our lesson review is taken from Romans 8th chapter, verses 18 through 27. And I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus Christ. See, it is Jesus that enables us to get the word of God out to you, the listening public. We originate from Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church, located in the Clean Fort Hood, Texas area. Our address is 4201 Zephyr Road, Clean, Texas, 76543. Now, you can reach us by telephone at area code 254-680-4378. If you prefer, however, to reach us online, our website is www.greaterpeace.com. You can also communicate with us by email. Our email address is greaterpeacembc at peoplepc.com. And we at Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church provide a greater variety of services for, well, we provide a variety of services anyway for your Christian growth. A complete schedule of services and activities can be viewed on our website. So please join us in extending God's kingdom here on earth. And I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I thank God for you supporting this ministry. Now let us pray before we're getting our Sunday school lesson. Gracious Father, it is again that we are here, that I am here presenting the lesson for this Sunday. This Sunday. And Lord, it's a pleasure to do this. And I ask that you would continue to guide me in all that I do. Help me to be the messenger and, and not the one that's basically making the message up on my own. I want this to be your word. I want the Holy Spirit to guide me as well as those that are listening so that we both can get a greater understanding of you and your ways as we study and go through your word. I thank you for these things and I pray for these things in Jesus' name, amen. Now, for my introduction, last Sunday's lesson focused on Christians being dead to sin and alive in Christ. Now, in, this, in that lesson, uh, we discovered that our acceptance of Jesus as Lord and Savior means we have a new relationship with God. Now, while on earth, Christians know that spiritually we are dead to sin, but physically we live in a body that has a sinful nature. Now, the Holy Spirit guides our sinful nature so that we are one with Christ. That is, our natural tendencies is to sin. But the Holy Spirit lives within us and acts as a counselor to guide us in conquering the old sinful nature. Now, in this Sunday's lesson, we are focusing on the anticipating redemption. Now, our lesson for today focuses on Romans chapter 8, chapter verses 18 through 27. However, all of chapter 8 should be understood in order to fully understand the meaning of our lesson taken from verses 18 through 27. So, if one carefully reads chapter 8, they will discover that it is divided into two into sections, basically, of freedom and fulfillment. Now, Romans 8 chapter verses 1 through 4 describes a Christian's freedom for judgment and no condemnation. Within these verses, we find the following. The law cannot claim you, the law cannot condemn you, and the law cannot control you, all because of Jesus Christ, what he did for us. Now, Romans 8, chapter, verses 5 through 17 is about freedom from defeat. And these verses are concerned with no obligations uh, to the old nature. So in Christ, we are concerned with living life according to the Holy Spirit. In Christ, Christians are not concerned about death because they know that the earth is not their home and they will depart this earth someday to be with Jesus. Now, unlike the old nature, Christians do not rebel against God. We submit to his ways. Christians do not live according to the flesh. Christians live in the spirit. Now, it is not enough for us to have the spirit but the Spirit must also have us if we are to be in Christ. Now, Romans 18, chapter verses 8 through 30 
have another freedom, and that enables freedom, talks about enabling Christians to know they have freedom from discouragement or frustration. Now, life on earth is filled with groans. That is, when we said define groans, as with things that have given us deep, mournful sounds, uttered in pain, sorrows, or anguish. In all our time on earth, at some point in time, we will suffer from oppression and afflictions. And these are the groans, that is, the sufferings, with deep, mournful, where we make deep, mournful sounds. Sometimes we don't say anything. Sometimes it's just raising your hand because you can't think of anything else to say. Raising your hand to Jesus. Now, all of creation suffers with groans because of sin that was brought into God's perfect creation. Now, in these verses, Paul states that there are three groans affecting God's created earth. God created a perfect place on earth for everyone and everything that lived in the beginning. But the introduction of sin into this perfectly created earth caused creation to groan, believers to groan, and the Holy Spirit to groan as well. Genesis 1.31 states that God saw everything that he had made, and he said that all was very good. But sin, the sin of, of Adam and Eve changed God's very good creation. God said to Abraham, to Adam, because you have heeded to your wife's voice, the following things will occur. Cursed is the ground for your sake. You will toil to provide food to eat all your life. Thorns and thistles will affect your ability to produce food. You will only eat if you are physically if you physically remove the thorns and thistle constantly from the fields that you grow your food. Because if you don't, the thorns and thistles will overtake the food that you planted. Now God said to Eve that he would make childbirth painful for her as well as all daughters born up to a woman. Now you may have missed the meaning of what happened because of sin. Now there are three things of creation that groan and suffer because of sin. The sin that came about through Adam. Creation itself groans. Today we live in a groaning creation because of Adam's sin. Creation was perfect, but this earth suffers from a curse today brought on by Adam. Because of Adam's sin, every part of God's creation is subjected to the curse on earth. All creation groans. Thorns and thistles and noxious weeds uh, began to grow with that curse that God placed on earth. And the daughters of Eve suffered for pain during their childbirth. The created animals groan also because they too are affected by the curse on the earth. The absence of water, green grass, sufficient food are all the results of the curse God placed on the earth because of Adam's sin. And these are the things animals depend on to live. They can't speak, but they are affected by the curse that brought, was brought on by Adam. Now, all of creation is awaiting the day of redemption when the earth will be transformed again into a place like the Garden of Eden was. Now, all of creation is basically, that's what they're waiting for. Now, believers groan also. Believers groan because we also are awaiting that blessed day when creation will return to the way God created it. We are awaiting that day because we have been given a foretaste of what life will be when we meet Jesus in heaven and all creation will be made anew. And we anticipate that day as a child anticipates Christmas and the various gifts and toys they receive. They believe that they will receive anyway. Christians are, are waiting to see that the streets, see, Christians are waiting, in other words, to see what the streets of gold are like in heaven. They want to see what kind of dwelling place they will live in for eternity, the kind of place that they pay no rent and no electric bill, no light bill either. But above all, Christians groan here on earth in, in anticipation of seeing Jesus and to see the redeeming bodies we will inherit because of Jesus' sacrifice here on earth. Now, throughout our groans on earth, we are willing to suffer them because we know 
Everything will be made anew when Jesus takes his church to live with him. In addition to the groans of creation and of believers, another important person also groans. The Holy Spirit groans. When Jesus was on earth, he groaned for the trials and tribulation of the people. Today, the Holy Spirit groans with us and feels the many burdens of our weaknesses and our suffering. The Holy Spirit not only groans for us, he prays for us in his groanings so we can be led into the will of God. We do not always know God's will for us, and oftentimes we do not know how to have, have the will to pray because of the things we suffer. Now, during these times, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us so that we can maintain a life that is within the will of God. If we are so distressed, so distressed that we can't speak, the Holy Spirit is there for us, to speak for us. The believer does not have to worry about faltering with respect to, uh, to God's word because we know that the Holy Spirit is working for us to assure that our faith continues to grow. So my hope is in this introduction is that these few words will help you in your walk with Jesus. Life on earth is filled with groans. That is, while we're here on earth, we suffer with deep, mournful sounds, uttering in pain, sorrow, or anguish. And all of our times on earth, we will suffer from oppression of some time and afflictions. But we should wait on the Lord because our hope and joy is in the Lord for all creation. This is the end of my introduction. So let's get it started with our Sunday School lesson. Our Sunday School lesson is titled, Anticipating the Redemption. The lesson text is taken from Romans 8th chapter, verses 18 through 27. And the golden text is Romans 8th chapter, verse 23. And it reads, And not only they, but ourselves also, which, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Lesson sections are, there are three of them. First section is suffering experienced, Romans 8th chapter, verses 18 through 21. Salvation explained, Romans 8th chapter, verses 20 through, 22 through 25. And finally, spirit empowerment, Romans, 20, Romans 8th chapter, verses 26 through 27. So let's get started with suffering experienced, verses 18 through 21. Starting at verse 18, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now in Revelation 21st chapter, verse 4, it states that in heaven all the worries we had and all the tears we shed because of memories or things that would happen on earth in the past will no longer exist because this verse states that God will wipe all tears from our eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain because God will remove, remove all, all of these things. So based on this verse alone, one can see that nothing in this time that we are living can compare to the glory of what God has revealed to us in his word about living with him in heaven. Now verse 19 reads, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. And verse 20 reads, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Now, all of creation is awaiting the day when manifestation of the sons of God or the righteous ones will see the manifestation of God's words come true. And by manifestation, I mean, uh, basically, the spirit become, we're talking about in religion, we're talking about and spiritual things because it, because it, it is something spiritual that becomes real and is said to be manifested. So this thing that comes becomes real basically is this manifested by God. Now all of creation is awaiting day when manifest, manifestation of the Son of God or the righteous one 
will see the manifestation of God's word come true. At that time, children will become what God always, children of God that is, will become what God always meant for them to be when he created them. He did not mean for them to be become sinners. He meant for them to live in a perfect world that he had created. Now, when sin entered creation, all of God's creation was put under a curse, and all of creation began to groan because of a curse. The earth was cursed, and pain during childbirth was guaranteed. Now, because of verse 21, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, also the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, Paul states here, that the entire universe is now held under a curse and the universe is awaiting the day when the curse is done away with. The earth itself is waiting for the day when it will no longer be under the curse and free of all thorns and thistles and weeds that were not meant to be from the beginning. God didn't mean for them to be here, but because of sin, they are here. Mankind desires to be free from oppression or afflictions because mankind groans under the weight of the curse brought on by Adam's sin. Now, the creatures on the earth groan also in that it is said that how the animals groan, the herds of the cattle are restless because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep, sheep suffer punishment all because of Adam's sin. Now, all, how long will the land mourn and the grass of every field be withered? Because the evil of its residents, the animals and the birds have been swept away. For the people have said, we cannot see what our end will be. All of the creatures suffer. The birds and animals suffer. They cannot speak to us and tell us what's wrong, but we know that they're wrong, what's wrong with them because we see them dying during famine. We see them without water, nothing to eat. And they are groaning, making untoward sounds because they have nothing to eat and they are dying. Now, when the day comes, when the day the curse is removed, creation will be free from the bondage of corruption and God's children and creation will be a glorious liberty such as it is in heaven today. Now, today, because the curse of Earth's humanity, the Earth itself, and the creatures on the, of the Earth are cursed. Now, when we talk about groaning, we said basically groaning is to breathe with a deep murmuring sound, to utter a mournful voice as in, a, in pain or sorrow. For we that are in this tabernacle, that is this body, do groan, being burdened, and basically to sigh, to be oppressed to, or afflicted or to complain of oppression. A nation uh, grows under the weight of taxes for that matter. So that's an example. But we grow, we groan under the weight of sin. Now, salvation explained basically is our next section, and that is Romans 8, chapter verses 22 through 25. And verse 22 reads, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. That is, the whole of creation groaneth because of sin. The creation didn't create sin, but man did. And God put man in charge of the earth, <clears throat> of creation for that matter. Now the children of God see all of creation and they know that the whole creation groaneth. That is, they know that oppression and afflictions or oppressions uh, will exist on earth and keep everyone under a condition where they are being burdened with so many things. <clears throat> Excuse me. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Now, not only does creation groan, but all of mankind groans also. All of God's children groan under the oppression of the curse brought on by sin. And then we know it said that the man was cursed. He had to basically live by the sweat of his brow. But we man has been rather artful. He doesn't have to go out and sweat anymore. He has air conditioned tractors to grow the food by. He can go out there. 
But God is not mocked because even though he does not go with the sweat of his brow, he is still subjected to death because all of the things that we do, the fertilizers is used, all of the materials they use to grow the feed has caused cancer and all kinds of uh, things, uh, health afflictions on mankind. So God is not mocked because man has created all of these things where he can control the sweat on his brow, but he still can't grow food without going under the rulership of God. But believers are the first fruit of the spirit because we have been united with Jesus. And as such, we have a guarantee that we are the first fruits of the spirit. That is, we have made the necessary installments to ensure our resurrected life when, when the curse is removed. We know that we will be with Jesus because we have given our life to him here on earth. Verse 24 reads, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? Now the Christian hope is hope in God and in Jesus Christ. It is a confident affirmation that God is faithful, that he will complete what he has begun. It is also therefore that confident expectation that which awaits patiently and ardently, ardently for God's purpose to be fulfilled. But this hope is based on faith in Jesus because that is the only guarantee that our hope is genuine. We will not see that hope until we see Jesus. Now verse 25 reads, but if we hope for that we see not, then we do then do we with patience wait for it? Now Edward Moat and William Bradley wrote a song titled My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. And it makes the following statements. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And the refrain says, On Christ's solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So we see that there's hope. And my, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. And if we have that faith that Abraham had, then we will be counted righteous as God counted him righteous because of his faith. We cannot see all the things Jesus has promised, but we have hope and patience because we know that the promise of Jesus will come true. Our faith is built on the promises of Jesus and nothing else. Now we get to our final section, and that is spirit empowerment. Romans 8, chapter, verses 26 through 27. Verse 26 reads, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh its intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, have any of you ever suffered from pain or suffering to the point that you could not come up with words to explain explain your feelings during prayer to Jesus? In, cir in circumstances like these, one might think that Jesus does not hear our prayers because we don't know what to say during these times. We're so wrought with the pain that we're going through. And if we cannot speak the words because of our the rest of him, we might think that Jesus does not hear us. Well, you do not have to worry about that. Uh, that you could not come up with the words to explain your pain or your suffering because the Holy Spirit can speak the words for you that you cannot personally speak due to your duress and suffering you are going through at the time when you speak to God or pray to God. The Holy Spirit knows what you're groaning through, going through and that you cannot come up with the words to express your prayers to him. So the Holy Spirit will reveal to Jesus the words you cannot come up with to express your sufferings because of your sufferings also. Now the Holy Spirit will express to Jesus for you the groanings which you cannot speak because of your suffering. Now verse 27 reads, and he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Now, in the Old Testament, any time a common person, or any person for that matter, came before a king, he had to do so in an acceptable manner. 
He could not just go into the presence of the king and begin to speak his mind, because if he did, he likely would be put in jail or die. Even Queen Esther was afraid to go before the king, her husband, because she realized that he had the power of life and death if she was not asked to see the king or the king did not indicate to her to come forth. Well, in the New Testament, things are a little different. When a sinner comes before King Jesus, listen, Jesus listens to what the, king, what the sinner has to say. Now, so let's listen to a few verses from Matthew a verse basically from Matthew the 20, 11, Matthew the 11th chapter, verse 28. It says, come to me, all you, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You see, there's always a, already a difference between going before Jesus and going before a natural king. John the 6th chapter, verse 37 reads, everyone whom the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never send away. Jesus is not like the unknown earthly kings, you can see. We can see from these verses that if you do not know what to say to the Lord, you can come to the Lord and explain to him what you do not know, what that, that you do not know what to say. The Spirit of the Lord or the Holy Spirit will make intercessions for you according to the will of God. So a child of God need not fear coming before God in prayer and not know what to say in his prayers to God. And that, my Christian friends, is the end of our Sunday School lesson. I hope something has been said that will be a benefit to you through this week and throughout your life, because it is God's word, not my words. I have been merely the messenger delivering God's word. So let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I am indeed thankful. Thankful for those that are listening. Thankful for you for giving me the necessary courage and necessary will to do your will, to follow what the Holy Spirit, lead, how the Holy Spirit leads me and not how I want to be led. I want this lesson to be something that people realize that it doesn't come from me, it comes from you. I am the basically the servant delivering the message. I thank you for all that you've done for me and I pray for all of those that are listening. And Lord, I pray that you will, Above all, help them to use this lesson to get a grain of gain a better understanding of you. Because a better gaining a better understanding of you means that we understand you better and we realize that we have to obey you. If we don't realize those things, then we're just like the unsaved sinner. We might just not believe in you at all. But we know that we those that are listening believe in you. And those that may not be those that are listening may not believe in you, I pray that the Holy Spirit will pierce their hearts so that they can understand the meaning of what it means to be with you. These things I pray and ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.